So we're gonna go ahead and get started with this month's, this month's 4-H Food and Fun. I'm Catherine Webster. So, and we are making egg roll in a bowl and then we are going to make lemonade shake-ups. So let's go over what you should have in front of you. You should have a pound of ground pork. It was kind of a flat package. You should have picked that up when you got your supplies from your extension office. I have actually already put my meat in my skillet. You don't have to do that yet. I just went ahead and got, my, got that step done. You um, And a great way to open that meat is with the kitchen shears that were in your last kit. So you could use these to open your meat. Um, you should have a bulb of garlic. Now, if for some reason you don't wanna use the fresh garlic, some of you may also have like a garlic powder or a garlic salt at home. It's okay to use those. The calendar recipe actually calls for garlic powder but I prefer fresh garlic. Anytime we can cook with fresh ingredients, it's always better. Um, I think it adds more flavor. It's also better for you. So we're gonna use um, a couple cloves from this bulb. You should have some ginger root. This may be something some of you have never cooked with before. If you've done cooking with um, the virtual cooking in Simpson County, we may have used the ginger root. This may be something new. Um, most of your families, you could pick this up at about any major grocery store. Some of your small ones may not have it, but this is ginger root. Um, or you might have some ground ginger or ginger powder and either one are okay. Again, um, I prefer fresh if I can find it. Ginger root is pretty inexpensive. Um, and if you pick up a piece in the grocery and it's more than you want. You simply break it in apart and you pay for what you need. So we're going to use ginger root. Um, you should have soy sauce. Now your recipe calls for low sodium soy sauce. Mine is not low sodium. We are using what I had at home. We cook Asian a lot in our house. So we buy soy sauce in big containers. So you need your soy sauce. Um, you're going to need coleslaw mix. I have a double bag, so yours will not be this bag. I'm gonna use half of it. Um, anywhere from a 10 to a 16 ounce bag of coleslaw mix. Now, you could also use a head of cabbage, cut that up real fine, but using coleslaw in a recipe that calls for cabbage is a great hack, trick, tip, because it's already cut up for you and coleslaw milks is pretty inexpensive. And then you're going to need an egg. And I've got my eggs back here and you're just gonna need one. All right, so grab an egg, so you'll want an egg. All right, I've got a skillet. Um, so you're gonna wanna get a, a skillet out and I've already got my ground pork in there. Um, I'm going to use a wooden spoon to cook with. I've also got in front of me a grater. You all had little graters in your kit, so grab that out. You're gonna use this for your ginger. Um, you had a vegetable brush. It helps wash vegetables. It's great for like whole carrots and potatoes when you're cleaning those, and it also has a vegetable peeler on it. So if you've got one of those, grab it. Mine looks a little different, um, but that's okay. Um, let's see. I have not cooked this ground pork before. I'm used to using ground turkey and it is so lean. I don't even have to drain it. However, we may end up needing to grab a strainer once we cook the ground pork. If it's got a lot of fat in it, we'll just kind of see as we go. Um, and then you need, hopefully everybody picked up sesame oil. Again, we cook Asian a lot in our house. So I have a huge container of it. For some of you all, it may be a smaller bottle that you found at your grocery, your local grocery store. All right. So again, I've got a big container of it. All right. Another thing that was in your kit was a Chop Chop magazine. It was the winter 2021. It's got an orange on the front. We're not gonna use this tonight, but I wanna point out in the Chop Chop magazine, let's see, pages 10 and 11. They talk all about cooking with spices. And it even, I believe, has some um, activities in here where you might wanna like cut up an apple or grab a carrot. And um, you can 
try different spices by simply dipping like an apple slice in it just to get a, a, a flavor to be able to tell what the taste is of that spice. So not something we're going to do tonight, but we're clearly cooking with spices tonight. Um, so you may want to spend some time with this later on. So we included this. So first thing, everybody should have your hands washed. If you don't, stop what you're doing. Go wash your hands. Um, if you have longer hair, you should have it pulled back. All right, just some safety tips, good habits to get um, to get used to when you're cooking in the kitchen. All right, one thing that is not on your recipe cards, your um, 4-H agent may have mentioned this in an email to you. This is totally optional, but this is a recipe and it mentions it in your calendar that one thing that you can do to make, um, to add to this meal, to add to the egg roll in a bowl, is to serve it with rice. It mentions brown rice. Um, we like white rice. We like a sticky rice. A brown rice is a little bit healthier. Um, but I have a huge bag back here of um, a sticky rice. This is what my family uses. So in my Instapot, I actually have just cooked rice. Um, I didn't want to have to tell you guys to go buy a certain kind of rice and then me teach you how to cook it. Every family, rice may be a staple in your house and you may have a certain kind of rice that you like. If you like brown rice, if you like minute rice, we prefer sticky rice, um, whatever that is. If you want to get a couple cups cooked, um, you can have it cooking in the background while we're doing egg roll in a bowl. You can make it afterwards when you're done. We have a rice cooker in our house, but I got an Instapot for Christmas and my Instapot now doubles as my rice cooker. So I have gone ahead and cooked rice. So I'm gonna be serving my egg roll in a bowl over white rice. So it's totally optional. But if you want to get some cooked in the background, you can do that and it'll be a great side to go with your egg roll in a bowl. All right, so first thing we're going to do is we are going to brown our ground pork. So take your package of meat, take your kitchen shears, open it, put your meat in the skillet. And I'm going to turn my, mine on. And at this point, I'm going to change my cameras to where you're going to hear me, but you're not going to see my face, okay? And if you all need anything chat, you can unmute and Anna will answer questions for you. Otherwise you can stay muted. Um, you can have your screens on or off. Remember at the end to grab pictures, um, either maybe somebody can snap a picture of you while you're cooking, or you can get a picture of you with your finished project, um, your finished product. And we will send out a link on Monday for those that are missing it tonight. And it'll include that same Qualtrics for you to share pictures with us. All right, so I have my meat in the skillet. I'm using a wooden spoon. Um, you need to grab some kind of heat resistant utensil. It may be a wooden spoon, it may be a spatula. If you are using a skillet that will scratch, just make sure it's nothing metal so you don't scratch your pan. And we are, I've got my mine turned up on medium high heat. I'm going to use the spoon to kind of chop the meat up and I'm gonna get that cooking. So you all want to do the same. One thing that was mentioned to us after our first 4-H Food and Fun is that there may have been periods where we move too fast. So if we are moving too fast, um, you can just stop us. You can chat. You can interrupt. And Anna will slow me down. Okay. So feel free to do that. Um, and my skillet is starting to heat up. And if your meat is sticking, you can turn it down a little bit. I believe, Anna, and you may chime in, I think this was in um, our emails. I believe our ground pork came from Hudnall Farms in Warren County. I think that's where we got this. Um, so we are trying to use some local ingredients. Yes, each month we are trying to focus on at least one main ingredient. So don't be surprised. And remember, we like our fun 
questions uh, regarding that product. And this month we are focusing on locally grown pork. And pork comes from a pig. Okay, so one thing I'll mention while this is cooking, if you are following along with the recipe that is in your calendar, I believe it mentioned that you are going to cook your ground meat until it's an internal temperature of 165 degrees. And we do have meat thermometers in our extension offices. However, we did not include one tonight because to be able to use a meat thermometer properly, you need to insert it into your meat about a half inch. Um, you can't just get it on the tip. You've got to get it into the piece of meat. That is not possible with ground meat. So we are going to cook our meat until it is no longer peak. So I just wanted to mention that meat thermometers are great. For most meat, you cook it till it's an internal temperature of 165 degrees. However, with ground meat, you cannot insert a meat thermometer into it because it's just not a big enough piece of meat. So for tonight, our indicator is gonna be when our meat has completely changed colors and we no longer see pink. Um, I, I guess I would say it's kind of gray is what uh, most ground meat looks like once it's cooked through. If it, it's sticking on the bottom, it looks like this ground pork is actually pretty lean. I wasn't sure because I had never used it before. Um, you know, for almost any ground meat, whether it's ground beef, ground chicken, ground um, sausage, anything like that, when you're browning it, you usually brown your meat and then you wanna put it into a strainer and you wanna drain that grease off. Um, Typically, I don't even have to drain it with ground turkey when I'm making this recipe. So I wasn't sure if we would have to drain the ground pork or not. We're just going to see how much fat cooks out of it. And it's looking like right now, this is pretty lean. We may not have to drain this meat once it's done. Just not often the case. You want to make sure you're using your wooden spoon, plastic spatula, you want to be getting it chopped up. Make sure everybody can see it into small pieces. And this is how we brown meat. Now, Miss Catherine, if they didn't, if pork wasn't their favorite meat product, is there any other things you might suggest they supplement with? I think you can use any ground meat. It calls for turkey, and I'll be honest, turkey is all we've ever used. We've made this recipe several times. Um, if you are, you know, maybe you um, raise your own cattle and you've got a freezer full of ground beef. Absolutely try it with ground beef. Um, ground chicken, ground turkey. We're using ground pork. I really feel like any um, burger or, or ground product, ground meat, you could try in this recipe. We are going to fill it full of flavor. So you're really not gonna taste the meat in this. You're gonna taste the spices that we're putting into it. All right, so mine is cooked. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna move it off the burner. And Just kind of hold it up in front of the camera so you can see. Um, we've totally lost the pink color. Um, a really a light gray is kind of what this looks like. And if you have some that's really getting brown, almost burnt, like a fried look, then it's more than done. Okay, so you need to stir it a little bit better um, or go ahead and take it off the heat. So you're going to get your meat browned and then you're just going to pull your skillet from the heat. 
I realize that some of you, I, I realize we're at different stages. So let me tell you what we're going to do next. We're going to, um, we want to grab our garlic bulb and we want to grab a piece of ginger because we are going to cut our garlic and our ginger to go into our mixture. Let me just talk while you all are finishing and let me just share. Um, fresh is always better. Um, we have learned that we love ginger. Um, we love the fresh ginger root. And so we use this quite a bit. Um, we love garlic in our house. Now, if you are a house that is not a fan of garlic, then maybe you want to opt for your garlic powder instead of your fresh garlic. Um, this calls for two teaspoons of garlic powder. We're going to use two or three cloves of garlic tonight. Um, it calls for a teaspoon of ground ginger. I would say we're going to take about a two inch piece. We're going to peel it and we're going to grate it. And in your kits, you received a paring knife. Okay, um, you got one of these small knives, so you can use this knife. And you want to get the skin off this ginger, okay? Um, and you, maybe you want to set it down and you want to kind of peel it. You can do it with the knife, okay? Just have to be careful. Another option for you is to do this with your vegetable peeler, okay? And let me use the one you all got, okay? And you go down the sides. My piece of ginger is pretty small for this big peeler, um, but that is another option, okay? So however you wanna peel it, whether you want to use the vegetable peeler that came on your brush, or it came, has the brush on one side, it came in your kit, whether um, you want to use the paring knife, you need to get that peel off. And again, about a two inch piece is what you wanna work with. If you have a lot of, if you bought a, a big piece of ginger root and you're not gonna use it all. So what you can do, you can peel it and you can freeze it. Um, you can throw it in a freezer bag and toss it in your freezer. You could go ahead and chop it up and then you could freeze it. Um, and this piece of ginger will keep in your refrigerator for a, should keep for a couple weeks. Um, if you've bought, if you've just bought it this week. All right. So I find it easier. I've got it peeled and I used my paring knife. Now I will say, I also have a peeler here in front of me. It's just a little bit different style. And again, you can see it's just not, it doesn't have that brush on the other side. So this would be another option. So you have a bulb of garlic, all right? And I've got my trash can here. We're gonna peel the paper off of this. I was watching a cooking demonstration by Chef T. She's, um, partners with Extension. She's from the University of Kentucky and she does cooking classes and, and teaches students. And so she called this the paper on our bulb of garlic. So that's what we're doing. We're just getting this paper off. Now, again, some of you may have the powder or the salt. Um, one thing that I failed to, to have in front of me, some people might buy ginger and it's already minced in a jar. Um, that is another option. Chef T just made the comment for the jarred and the, the, the uh, comes in ginger and also garlic. I've bought the ginger the same. Um, sometimes that'll have some chemicals added to it, preservatives added to it. So that's why we choose to use fresh, but that is a faster option and they're pretty inexpensive. You can get a big jar of minced garlic and once you open it, you keep it in the refrigerator and it'll last for quite a while. So that's another option. All right, so I've got my bulb. I have pulled off the paper and this is what's called a clove of garlic, all right? I'm gonna do, let's see, our recipe initially called for two teaspoons of garlic powder. So I'm gonna shoot for a couple teaspoons of fresh garlic and we're gonna chop it. So I'm, I'm taking three cloves. Now, again, my family, my house loves garlic. Okay, so we got three cloves of garlic here. 
And I'm going to set the rest of my bulb aside. And I'm gonna throw away all the paper. Again, I've got a trash can right here that I'm working into, okay? Now we've still got some peel left on these cloves of garlic. Here's the easiest way to get that off. Take a knife and it can even be um, a butter knife. Doesn't have to be a sharp knife, okay? Put it under it and press down with the palm of your hand. That is going to pop the remaining paper or peel on your clove of garlic. And I've got a really big clove right here, okay? So take your next clove and try that again. Put it under it, mash down to kind of pop it with the palm of your hand. And then you can see that it peels very easily, okay? So do that with two or three cloves, really kind of whatever your family likes. And then we're gonna, we're gonna chop it up real finely. Um, so here's what we're gonna do. On our garlic clove, we're gonna take our paring knife, our small knife, and we are going to slice. And I'm not slicing all the way through, okay? Kind of leaving it attached on one end. And then I'm gonna start going the other direction. And that way I get real little pieces. Now, when you cut, you need to, and I, again, I'm not the best person to teach you about cutting, but you wanna kind of have your fingers folded in and use your knuckles to hold it. That way you don't take off a finger, all right? It gets hard because we're working with something so little, all right? So I've kind of got that cut. And I'm gonna do the same thing for my next one. I'm gonna work from, I'm gonna slice it, but not, not all the way to the end. So it stays intact a little bit. And then I'm gonna go the other direction. So I get some little pieces. And I'm gonna try to, to do this to keep my fingers back. You can always hold it with your knuckles. Okay. Now, if you feel like your pieces are still too big, I'm gonna pick up a, uh, I've got a small chef's knife. I think, I can't remember exactly what it's called, maybe a utility knife. And I'm gonna rock it back over it. Okay, that just helps to get it cut a little more fine, a little more chopped. Okay. All right. So we should have two or three cloves, just whatever you prefer. And we've got it chopped. Okay, peeled and chopped. So you have your piece of ginger root. I said about two inches and you're gonna grate this. So if you get your little grater out, all right, one side and I'm just rubbing it up and down, okay? And it is grating it very finely, all right? You can kind of see there, it's kind of, it's kind of hard to see, but I'm rubbing it up and down on not the slice side, not the side you would grate cheese with, but the side that has the real small pieces. Okay, and I'm getting it grated. Now this is so small, like let's try it on the, the little cheese side, see how it does. It may be just fine because it's such a small, yep, that'll work too. Um, recipe says, let's see, about a teaspoon of fresh ginger, which I have a teaspoon there, okay? I love ginger. I'm going to put extra in mine. Um, but you can make sure you've got about a teaspoon and you can stop there or you can keep going. It's totally up to you. On the garlic, it said about um, two teaspoons and I did three cloves. That gives me more than enough. Okay, so we're gonna get our skillet back on the burner and we're gonna turn it on. Let's go with medium high, okay? Grab a tablespoon and you are going to add two tablespoons of sesame oil to your skillet. And I'll be honest, right now, I have my meat pushed to one side and it's okay to do that. If you wanna put your meat on one side, okay? Add a couple tablespoons of sesame oil. All right, now I'll just be real honest. I absolutely love sesame oil. 
to me, it is the key to Asian cooking. I know this recipe called for oil and it did not tell you what kind if you were looking at the calendar, but you, to, I can't cook Asian without sesame oil. The aroma in the house, the flavor that it adds. So I have got my oil in here and I'm going to scrape my ginger and my garlic in. And I'm putting it on top of that oil. And then I'm going to add my coleslaw. And you should have anywhere from a 10 to a 16 ounce bag. Um, if your kitchen shears have been cleaned from using them to open your raw meat, you could use those to cut this. If you have the raw meat still on these scissors, you need to use something else, okay? Rip it, grab a knife. I've got another pair of kitchen shears. I'm gonna cut my slaw mix. Now, my slaw mix came from Sam's. It's two pounds. So I'm only going to use half the bag, but you all want to use, if you've got one bag that's 10 to 16 ounces, use the whole bag. And we're gonna add that. Again, I've still got my meat on one side and I've got my oil and my spices on the other. Okay, and it's gonna fill your skillet, but this is gonna cook down. Um, I made this recipe with about a hundred middle school students a couple of weeks ago. They were very hesitant of all the cabbage I added to their recipes. In fact, I got to the point where I put it in their skillets because they weren't putting enough, but they were amazed how it cooked down. All right. And we're gonna just kind of get this cooked up. And um, I have a couple huge pieces in my bag of mix. So I'm gonna pull that out. But I'm gonna kind of stir this on that. I'm, I'm kind of cooking this, getting this, the uh, sesame oil mixed over my cabbage and with my garlic and my fresh ginger. I know your recipe says to add soy sauce. We will, but I'm not doing that yet, okay? I'm just pulling out some of the really big pieces that happen to be in my bag of slaw mix. So you're, I guess we could maybe call this sauteing. Right now you were just trying to cook, get your vegetables cooked, stirred up, and, in, and we're doing it in the sesame oil. If yours is really dry and you feel like you need a little bit more oil, just add some more sesame oil, okay? Miss Catherine, what heat level are you using right now? I'm at medium, medium high, medium to medium. I'm at medium high, Anna, and I'm to the point now where I'm stirring it all together. So go ahead and stir the meat in with your cabbage, your ginger, and your garlic. Um, my oil has cooked up, okay? It's totally absorbed, it's pretty dry. I'm gonna add another tablespoon of oil. Now, again, this is, it just kind of depends on your skillet, the heat you're at, um, but it's, mine's pretty dry. So I'm adding another tablespoon of sesame oil. That's totally optional. Okay, and we are simply cooking this until our vegetables get soft, okay? So you can grab a liquid measuring cup and the recipe calls for a fourth of a cup of soy sauce. I've got a big clear cup in front of me. The way we use a liquid measuring cup is you bend down and you get eye level. All right, so I'm gonna bend down, I'm getting eye level and I'm watching for the one fourth of a cup. Okay, and it calls for a low sodium. It won't be quite as salty. I use normal soy sauce because this is what we had at our house. Um, all right, and I'm gonna pour that in. Soy sauce is another one of those things that's in a lot of Asian recipes. Either it's cooked into it or you, you maybe eat it on the side, kind of as a condiment. All right, 
And again, we're just cooking this for a few minutes. My vegetables are getting tender, okay? They're getting soft. So I think mine are about done. Um, it should be kind of soft. All right, look, I've taken kind of a spoonful out. All right, everything is cooked in here. So here's something I do. I will simply grab one piece of cabbage out of, the, out of what I've cooked and I taste it. If it's the texture that you like it, that your family likes it, then that's when you know it's ready. I just took a bite of that cabbage and it's, it's tender, but it's crunchy. And, and that's what your recipe says. Cook until your vegetables are tender. You know, every oven is different. Your skillets are different. Your quantities are different. So we're all gonna be at a little different pace. Um, but again, all you're doing is cooking your cabbage, garlic, and ginger in your sesame oil. We have added soy sauce. And the recipe simply says you cook until your vegetables are tender. So when you have these at the point that your family likes, um, you know, I like my vegetables very soft. My husband likes them more firm and crunchy. So again, it's really to taste. And our last step, and I don't want to move too fast, but Anna, I have to do it when mine is done before I take it off of the burner, okay? So our last step, once you have it cooked, is that you're going to make, and I turn my heat down to medium, by the way. So if yours are done and you are waiting for the very last step, go ahead and drop your heat to at least medium, okay? You're going to make a hole in the center is what we're going to do. And I'm going to hold it up here and show it. Okay, my mixture's cooked. I've made a hole in the center. Okay. That hole is for an egg. But we are not going to crack our egg straight into the skillet because if for some reason we had a bad egg, we have ruined our recipe. So anytime you crack an egg, you always crack it into a bowl, to a measuring cup, something by itself. So if it happened to be bad, you can throw it away and you haven't ruined your recipe. So I'm grabbing my measuring cup that had soy sauce in it. I'm cracking my egg into it, which is perfectly fine. And then I'm gonna take this egg and I'm gonna put it in the hole. This is the last step to cooking. And you can see I made a hole. I put the egg in the center. I'm putting it on my medium heat. I'm wearing an apron, so that's what I'm gonna use to wipe my hands on. And I'm just gonna break the egg and get that egg cooked. You're literally frying an egg in the center of this. I'm gonna turn my heat up just a little bit. And then you're just getting this egg fried in the center, which I bet this is something a lot of you haven't done. When I make fried rice, it always has scrambled eggs in it. And I'll usually cook three or four first thing and then I'll set them aside, okay? So now that my egg is starting to fry, I'm just gonna stir it all up. Basically, I'm stirring that egg that's almost cooked into my mixture. And my egg, it's, it's totally cooked through. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the heat for me. And we have egg roll in a bowl. We can put some on our plate and we can enjoy. Or if you cooked rice, Put some rice. I have again, I did a white rice, it's a sticky rice, and I'm going to put it on top of it. Okay, so you've got a couple options. There's our, our plated, um, we can do the egg roll in a bowl, I'm trying to get it centered here, or we can do the egg roll in a bowl served over your favorite rice. Last thing that we're going to make to go with this is a lemonade shake up.
One of my favorite fair foods is a lemonade. Um, I love the lemonades at the Kentucky State Fair. They are very expensive and they seem to go really quick. So I decided after last year's state fair that I would learn how to make um, a state fair lemonade or that just real sugary, sweet, tart, little bit of all of it lemonade shake up. So that's what we're going to make. I have my jar, I have one lemon, I have one third of a cup of sugar. For you all, if you are cooking in your kitchen, you do not need to measure your water out. You're going to go to your faucet and you're going to get your water in just a minute, okay? So I don't have a certain amount in my measuring cup. It's just got water in it right now. And then we're going to need ice. And again, you're going to be able to go to your freezer and get ice in just a minute. You don't even have to measure it, okay? So the first thing that we're going to do, I'm going, I've washed my lemon. I'm going to cut it in half. And I'm going to cut the ends off of each piece, okay? So I've taken my lemon, I've cut it in half, and I've cut the ends off. I'll even get the water out of the way, okay? Now, what I am gonna do, any seeds that are visible, I'm just gonna take the sharp end of my knife, the point, and I'm gonna get any seeds out I can see. I'm not digging through my lemon. The seeds aren't gonna hurt us, but the ones that are on top that I can see, I'm just gonna go ahead and get those out, okay? All right, so we have our two lemon halves and I have just gotten the, the seeds out that I can see. And then I'm gonna take my jar and I'm going to squeeze my lemon into my jar. Okay, I want to get all the juice out of it. I've got a seed on my finger that I can. Okay, now some of you might have a juicer at home, a hand juicer, not, not an appliance. Okay, and look, if you get seeds in it, it's okay. We got out what we could see, but it's not going to hurt. Okay, squeeze as much juice out of that as you can, and then drop it in your jar. Now, I love my hand juicer, okay? So for my second one, I'm going to put it in here and show you how I use that, all right? And I'm, I put my half in there, and I'm squeezing it over the top of the jar. These are about, I don't know, probably 6 to $8 at most grocery stores. Um, we make a lot of lemonade shakeups in our house, so we definitely get our money's worth out of it. So if you have one, you can use it. I've even got some running down the side of the jar, but if not, just squeeze it with your hand, okay? And I'm gonna, I see a couple more seeds, so I'm gonna go ahead and knock those out before I put it in the jar. Okay, and then I'm dropping it in. So I have my one quart jar, it's got, all the juice I could squeeze out of the lemons with my hands, and then I still drop the lemons down in it, okay? And then we're going to pour our one third of a cup of sugar in it, okay? Now, if your family is one and you don't do a lot of sugar, you could try this with an artificial sweetener, maybe a Splenda or something like that. Um, but to get that state fair flavor, I'm using real sugar. All right, my lemons, my one third of a cup of sugar. Now you are going to fill it with ice. And I actually have my ice handy, okay? You are filling it to the rounded part of the jar, okay? So we're not measuring it. We're just filling it till we get to the rounded part of the jar. And you can just do this with ice out of your freezer, okay? And I'm gonna, I meant to take a Sharpie and mark it, okay? I, when, when the jar starts to round off, that's where you stop, okay? Makes sense to everybody. Not a certain amount of ice, just go till it's rounded, okay? And then you're gonna add water to that same spot, okay? So my ice is to the rounded part, I'm going to pour water to that same rounded part of the jar. And you can just take it over to your sink, okay, and get water out of the tap. And 
Again, go just to the rounded edge. So we've got our lemon, our lemon juice, our lemons. We've got our sugar, a third of a cup. We've gone to the rounded top part of the jar with ice. And then we've done that with water. We're going to screw our lid on and we're gonna shake it for about one minute. Now, if you want a gulp of that kind of gritty sugar, like sometimes you get at the state fair if you're drinking out of a straw, maybe only shake it for 30 seconds. I like to kind of have my sugar dissolved, okay? Um, but that's all you're doing. I can't tell you how many of these we drink uh, quite a bit. It's definitely a treat for the office. Um, they're just, they're fun. You're right. You need a lemon with, you know, most everybody has sugar, water, and ice. Um, you don't need to be able to make lemonade and have a packet or a premix. You can just do it with a fresh squeezed lemon. And like I said, when we were making the um, egg roll in a bowl, I used the, the fresh ginger. I used the fresh garlic because I feel like fresh is always better. And that was one of our objectives with 4-H Food and Fun is that if something's in season, we um, show you some recipes that you can use an in-season commodity with. And so, of course, for tonight, we've used our um, ground pork. You don't really get lemons here. They don't grow here. You know, it's citrus. So a lot of times they come from a Southern state or maybe even California, but a lot of people, lemons are inexpensive and you can get those at any time. I believe in May, we're going to feature strawberries. And so our recipes will have fresh strawberries in them. And as long as we can get them, you will all receive some um, fresh grown strawberries for our recipe. And so we've got our lemonade shake up and we've got our egg roll in a bowl and you have just fixed supper and a beverage for your family.